And welcome back, everyone, to its last call. Last call with the alcohol only on the Last Call YouTube channel. Joining me now on the line, this man will be fighting once again. It will be all the way in Bellator. Well, he plans once again to start, well, dare I say, getting back on a winning streak, and getting back in the title picture. I give you once again uh, the pride and joy from North Carolina. I give you with John Salter. Uh, John, a lot of things going on here. Uh, first, you know what? So usually, no, everybody tries to avoid you with the black play. I mean, you're a guy that nobody wants to face because you're a tough out. You now have a guy who's been ca calling you out in Johnny Evelyn. How surprised are you? But here's this guy who's talking all this trash. He's calling you out, and you're like, okay, this is bizarre. Usually people avoid me. What the hell does this guy do? Why does he want to fight me now? Yeah, I, uh, I've, you know, I thought it was kind of surprising. So kind of the story behind the story, uh, I got a contract on real short notice to fight him in November. And uh, I got it like midnight. And I called my manager. I'm like, what is this? He's like, I have no idea. He's like, I didn't know anything about it either. And uh, so can you find out? And uh, so he tried to find out. And I don't know. There's obviously some miscommunication somewhere. And he goes, I, I can't really get any good answers. Um, so I don't know. I said, well, I'd love to fight him in December and give myself a little bit of time, you know, to prep, but I, I'd love that. He said, okay, I'll let him know. Never heard anything. Um, and then I was actually, I competed at the ADCC trials and um, I was actually out uh, fishing with my buddy. And um, I thought, man, I wonder uh, whatever happened with Evelyn. I wonder if he fought that night that uh, we were talking about fighting. So I go on Bellator's uh, page to look and see, and uh, he was supposed to be fighting the in December when I had said, you know, I'd like to fight him. Um, so I was like, okay, whatever, that sounds good. They they figured it out. I'll get something soon. And then uh, after he, I didn't even watch his fight, and after the fight, I started getting text messages from everybody um, telling me, uh, you know, that he was uh, calling me out and saying that I backed out and all that kind of stuff. And, I never, I thought it was just a mistake contract. I thought he never, uh, I didn't know that he knew anything about that fight happening. So uh, it's kind of interesting, but uh, you know, I think it's a good, it'll be a very interesting fight. We're both good wrestlers, you know, um, neither one I'm scared to strike. So I think it's no matter what, it's going to turn into a good fight. And uh, you know, two versus three is uh, about as good a matchup as you can ask for. A lot of people are on this hype train. Look, he's pretty good. He's 10 to 0. So it means he has to be pr pretty good here. You've seen him probably tape. You look, you've seen him on the clips here. How good is he? I mean, because it's one thing to fight guys like Danny Madrid, Taylor Johnson, uh, Colin, Huck Colin Huckabee. It's a whole thing to fight somebody, guys like you fought, you know, whether it was Gegard Musasi, whether it was uh, Derek Jacoby. You know, you've even fought, you know, as I said, you fought almost everybody there is, including guys like Rafael Lovato Jr., Costello Sven Stennis. How good is Evelyn? And what make what kind of what makes him so, I guess, good so far in his young career? You know, I think he's he's very good. You know, obviously you say 10 and 0, you gotta, you know, he's uh he's a really good fighter. Um and he hasn't faced anybody really tough. And I don't think that doesn't make me question um whether he's good or not. But I think, um, you know, he's going to see adversity in this fight that I don't think he's been prepared for before, you know. So that obviously is something that, uh, you know, changes the way the fight goes when, you know, how you deal with that. So this is going to be the time that we get to find out how he deals with, uh, you know, somebody not – he's been able to bully everybody around the cage that he's fought. And so when that changes, how is he going to react to that? How much do you look back at those fights, whether it was the win against Vince Dennis, the loss to Lovato Jr., or even the, you know, the, the fight we, you know, against guys like Shitty, no, no, Juk no, Juwani and Dustin Jacoby go, okay, they helped shape me because, you know, I had to go through adversity. I had to go through toughness here. How much do you look at those and go, this is going to, this is what helps me against. You know, Evelyn, but I've been there. I know what it's like when plan A doesn't work. Plan B is, you know, falling. And I can go to plan C and plan D. Yeah, I mean, you know, trying to take something away from every fight, no matter what. But um, absolutely, you know, uh, you get used to having to rely on things that, uh, you know, that you're that you weren't planning on. 
and uh, you know you start getting multiple ways to do things, ways to be tricky, sneaky, you know, um, and uh, you know you start setting up traps for people to fall into. And I think, and I, I think it takes those tough fights to uh, pick a lot of that stuff up. We'll go back to this fight a bit because there's a lot to talk about. But take me before me even before we go to the Gary Guard Musasi fight. Take me to the AD, ACD, the uh, ADCC trials. Uh, that's something you've never done. You've now done it. Was a, you had three uh, three fights in basically one day? Uh, what was that like? Why is that a big deal for those who don't know? And and for you, how much do you take away from that, just in terms of your personal growth as a fighter? Well, I, I have done them before. I, I won in 2017 um, when I had I think I had six matches in a day and uh, beat two world champs and uh, to qualify for the ADCCs. I didn't uh, go in the 2019 year because of uh, fights. Um, so then they had to postpone it to, uh, you know, a little while for the trials this time. And, um, I, you know, I went, I had, uh, I think I had three matches my first day and then four my second day. And in the quarterfinal or no, the semifinals, um, I had a, a three-time uh, world champ uh, in Elder Cruz. And, uh, you know, just a really tough match. We went to overtime. At the end of overtime, it was 0-0. Zero, zero, and they picked him as the winner. Um, you know, and I think those are just kind of things that, you you know, teach you lessons. You, uh, you know, it's tough matches. Just you always get better from them. You know, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose um, those tough overtime matches. I had three overtime matches there. And uh, those just make you better at, uh, at competing. How tough is it for you in a grappling match where you got to get rid of stuff you use? I mean, you're a guy who can strike. You're a guy who throws leg kicks. You're a guy who knows how to use spinning elbows. That's all off the table. And now you're taking on guys who just all we do is grab us, all we literally do. So for so if you going in there, how tough is it sometimes where the muscle memory is screaming, yeah, throw the, throw the right hook. It's like, no, I can't do that here. And, you're, you know, the other guys, for him, it's like this is just like, you know, Brushing his teeth. He does it on a daily basis, so he knows exactly what he's going to do all the time. Yeah, the, the kind of the hardest thing is you're going against – because very few MMA guys go to those tournaments, you know. So you're running into guys that all they do is jiu-jitsu all the time. So, um, you know, that's tough just in – you know, you're going against a specialist so somebody has to do everything. But the other thing that's really tough is obviously MMA is top-driven because you can do damage from top – and jujitsu is changing a lot. It's uh, really going, the rule set is going to favor the bottom guy. And um, a perfect example of that is in 2017, the year I won the trials, um, they said, if you lock your guard up and the guy on top is trying to open your guard, then you're stalling because the guy on top is trying to be active. And at these trials, if it was the exact opposite, if you lock your guard up and the guy on top can't open it, he stalled. Um, so, you know, they're just changing the rule sets a lot to really favor the bottom guy. And um, while I think that, um, you know, in the jiu-jitsu world, people like that a lot, it makes it hard as a wrestler and an MMA guy to um, continually compete um, against a lot of these guys when the, the rule sets are changing so far away from MMA. Now, this is also, it's 87.9 kilograms. So, Correct me if I'm wrong. That's technically bigger than your what you walk around for, you know, your fight nights. So when you have that, when you have when you have basically a weight class where you you know that's it's big enough for you, but you know there's still guys who hey you know, you're who are at the you know two hundred pound plus mark. How often did you feel like when you're wrestling Elder Cruz or Jacob, you know, Couch is like, oh crap, I'm fighting light heavyweight for God's sakes? Um, you know, I, I usually walk around about 200 pounds, so uh, you know that 87.9 uh, kilograms is like 193 and a half, so that's a good, uh, you know, good weight for me, really. So it's not really a problem, and people don't cut the same and. Uh, jiu-jitsu a lot of times so elder cruz is a little bigger um than me but other than that you know everybody's kind of the same size um so it, that really wasn't a big effect on me i don't think um i uh 
I think, you know, just running into tough guys, you know, I had, I didn't have really an easy match the whole time. And um, like I said, I ended up having seven matches over two days. So um, just a lot of experience against good guys. So it, it was a good, good weekend. And uh, no, I don't think uh, I never got an offensive point scored on me. Um, I got a, uh, ended up getting a, a negative point um, for uh, they said I, I grabbed a rash guard when a guy grabbed his own rash guard. And um, so uh, that was the the points, but uh, that was just a negative point. I never got an offensive point scored on me. It's funny. Whenever I talk with MMA fighters, whether it's yourself or, or even guys like uh, Benson Henderson, uh, we've had Brent Primus. They always said MMA is our business. Grappling is our first love. You talk, and I can, I can hear you talk about it the same way. It's like, yeah, I just love this year. I did all this. What is it about with grappling? But for you, it's like, I could do this for free. I don't care. I just love grappling. I love going to jujitsu tournaments and just literally doing this for as long as I can. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's just something that's a very enjoyable sport. Um, and uh, it's growing so much. Uh, I think it's really getting removed a long way from MMA. Because now you have guys that, you know, they call them fights and they'll go out there and both of them will sit on their butt and see who can leg lock the other guy, you know. So it, it is changing a lot. But um, uh, I like old school jiu-jitsu a lot more that was more of, uh, you know, that looked like MMA without punches. But it's still, it's fun to keep up with the changes and, you know, even coaching people, having to coach to what's happening now, you know. Um, it's just, it's an always evolving sport and it's a lot of fun to be a part of. If you're just tuning in, once again, we got John Salter here on the show. We're talking all things, of course, Johnny Eppelin. We're talking, uh, grappling. We're talking even, uh, Elder Cruz. Let's talk about Gigard Musasi. Uh, you, you came to fight and, you know, for round one, you did pretty well. You got him down. You gave him some trouble. What went, what went right? What went wrong? And when did you start noticing, like, oh, crap, it's getting away from me here. Oh, crap, you know, he's – it's a, whether it's a small thing, whether it's something minor or, you know, something that he did, just he tweaked, that he started taking advantage and started getting stronger. He um, he just makes adjustments so well. Um, the first round went really well. Um, you know, uh, I, I felt really good at the end of the first round of, okay, this is going my way I can do this, you know, I can do this for five rounds. And he made a small adjustment in the second round of just the way he was angling um, that was bothering me because I couldn't really set up my shot. And um, then when I took my shot in the second round, I still took him down, but it was basically luck. I ended up catching his foot as he went down. And um, in my head, I knew okay that, that one's out. I'm not getting that again. And that made me a little more desperate on the cage, trying to hang on, uh, where, you know, I, I should have been a little more relaxed. And uh, at the, you know, at the end of the second round, I got real desperate to keep him down and ended up on my back, uh, just selling out, trying to keep him down. And uh, from there, it was downhill. And I went out in that third round. Uh, you know, I, my corner said to me, uh, you, know, you got to take him down in the center. And I thought, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I remember what Lovato was doing. Lovato was shooting in on a shot and then pulling half guard and sweeping him. So, okay, I, I'm going to go with that. See if I can do that. And, um, you know, when you go to fake something to do something else, a lot of times you shortchange the first thing. So in my mind, I thought I'm going to take a, a shot and pull him into a half guard. Ended up taking about a half shot, uh, you know, and shortchanging it and ended up uh, on my back against the cage. And uh, there's just nowhere to move. He's got a really good top pressure. And I got stuck there and, um, you know, he's able to finish me there. How tough is it when you with a guy like that where – and if, people say always, you know, they use the word great strikers a lot. Usually guys who are very dynamic or have heavy hands. He's a great striker in terms of he knows how to use everything, whether it's his leg kicks, whether it's the jab, the overhand right, the, you know, body shots, knees. If he needs to do you know, elbows, he'll do elbows. Like how much, does, you know, when you look back, is it just tough for us, you know, fighting guy who – I noticed this. No matter when you, where we got, whenever you were to take down, wherever you're trying to, you know, give him a cage, he's just there's a couple of knees. 
oh, there, you know, there's a, you know, you know, a tie knee or very, you know, he's, or even a calf kick or something where it's like, all right, you want to come in, you want, you know, try to take me down. I'm at least going to make you earn it. You're going to hurt, you know, I'm trying to get these takedowns. He is deceptively fast. Um, you know, you uh, watching him fight, I thought, you know, Chitty uh, Nijikwani was the fastest guy I've ever fought uh, before this. And I thought, you know, okay, he's not on that level of speed. And then when we got out there, he threw his first jab. I thought, okay, I, I kind of missed that. And uh, then he threw another one. I, was, I realized he was as fast, fast, if not faster than Chitty, but he had a lot of power behind it, a lot of accuracy. And uh, his feints were so good they keep you on the defense the whole time. And I think that's his strongest thing is that he feints so well without big movements that you just stay on the defense the whole time. Last question off this time before we let you go. I, I know you, you didn't, you know, when we, let, when we let into the fight, you didn't think much of it. Looking back, how much did it can help some that Costello Van Stennis, you know, literally was able to fight you and give him, you know, sort of that, you know, bird's eye view of, hey, Salter's going to do this. Hey, I did this with John Salter and it worked. You can do this. Like, how much does it help sometimes having, you know, a teammate who fights the same guys you're going to fight can give you sort of that really in-depth scouting report? I mean, it can't hurt. You know, they're, they're two different fighters. You know, they fight uh, – really, I think they fight very differently. So, I can uh, – you know, I, I don't know how much it was – he was able to tell him exactly this is what worked, this didn't. But, you know, when you've got somebody that – you know, you know, like he knows Van Stenis and then you see what's happening. I'm sure that helps a ton and then have him come back. And this is what I felt, you know, I'm, I'm sure that really helped a lot. Um, but at the end of the day, that night, he was just better than me. And um, he just he made adjustments better than I was able to. It all comes back down once again, as we said, it's going to be you, Johnny Eplin. And it's if it's, if it's a dynamic of his fight. As you said, Austin Vanderport's the number one guy. Um, he's fighting as we speak this week, this weekend against none other than Gegard Mousasi. Even after that, it's like it's everybody in a free for all. A win over Eblon, you know, worst comes to worst, you might not fight another, you know, either another guy or hell, there's been talk that Mousasi might retire sooner. Uh, how much you look at this fight and go, okay, my back is against the wall. If I win this fight, I'm still in contention. If I lose this fight, it's going to be a long road here. How much do you just try to focus on not overthinking things against Johnny Eblin? Uh, you know, I mean, that's the thing. It's just, this, this fight is all that matters right now. Um, you know, and I, I can't do anything about the future because who knows who's going to be where, who's going to retire, who's going to be, uh, you know, who's going to win tomorrow. Uh, all that really doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I just got uh, win on the 12th and then after that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about what's next from there. A very happy, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I give you a none other than, well, a former number one contender. And while he plans to get back into the title picture soon, I give you it's, uh, well, one of the best pound for pound uh, grapplers in this business. I give you it's John Salter. Uh, John, before I let you go, where else can fans check you out at? Where is, you know, the Twitter page, Instagram, the website, and who are the sponsors going to be for this fight coming up on March 12th? Um, yeah, you can find me on uh, Instagram or YouTube and uh, John Salter MMA. And, uh, and you know, sponsors, uh, like always, are going to be uh, Richling, Richland Builder Partners and uh, Oak Grove Technologies. So uh, make sure and check those out. John Salter, ladies and gentlemen, once again, always on a pleasure having on the show. Stay tuned for more great action coming up. Once again, only on its last call. Last call with the alcohol, only on the last call YouTube channel.